Hello everyone. In this presentation, we will be covering the wrist and digits, which are the last part of the upper limb. Let's start with the wrist, which are made up of eight bones. We have the proximal row, which is the row that will articulate with the radius and the ulna. And then we have the distal row, which will be the one that will articulate with the bones of the hands, which are known as metacarpals. Each row will have four bones. On the proximal row, there's the scaphoid, lunate, triquetrum, and pisiform. And on the distal row, it's going to be the trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamid. I know it's a little bit hard for us to remember these bones, but we will use some mnemonics that will help us remember which bones are located where. And for this, we will be using the image that's on the next slide. On this slide, we can talk about the metacarpals, which are five, and they are usually numbered in Roman numerals, even though this slide uses Arabic numbers that we're used to. But they are numbered starting with the thumb. So this one over here would be your metacarpal number one. This one over here would be your metacarpal number two. The one in the middle, metacarpal number three, metacarpal number four, and metacarpal number five. And these are called metacarpals because your wrist bones are actually called your carpal bones. Then we move on to the digits, which are made up of these bones that are called phalanges. Now phalanges is plural. The singular for phalanges is a phalanx. So if you're talking about just one, you will call it a phalanx. Your thumb is actually made up of two phalanges only, which is the proximal and the distal phalanx. Now, all the other digits are made up of three phalanges. You're going to have a proximal, a middle, and a distal. As you can see, the next one will also have a proximal, a middle, and a distal, and so forth. So for a total of 14 phalanges on each hand. In addition, the thumb, which is made up, like we said, of two phalanges, a proximal and a distal, when we want to talk about both of them together, we will call it a pollux. So your thumb, that's made up of two phalanges, the distal and the proximal, can be called a pollux. And this is going to be important when we get especially to muscles, because all the muscles that will go to the thumb will have the word pollicis on them coming from the word pollux. So keep this in mind when we get to the muscle part. In addition, I want to add that the scaphoid and the lunate are the ones that will articulate with the radius. The triquetrum will articulate with the ulna and the pisiform will not articulate with the forearm at all. So this over here is a posterior view, and on the other side we have an interior view. As you can see, your wrist bones are going to be located right over here. And on an interior view, they're a little bit easier for you to differentiate because they will have some features that will make it easier for you to differentiate. The other thing that you should keep in mind is that there are several mnemonics that you can use to identify your carpal bones. The one that's here is Sam likes to push the toy car hard. But one thing that you have to keep in mind is when you search for a mnemonic online, if you don't want to use this one, is to make sure that you know where it will start. So in this example, it's starting on the proximal row on the lateral side. So it will start with the thumb. And then it will come back again for the distal row on the lateral side again, and then go medially. So let's start with the first bone. The first bone is going to be this one right over here, which is the scaphoid. The second one is this one, which is the lunate. Then here we have the triquetrum. And on top of that triquetrum, we have this little ball that's called the pisiform. Then we come again to the lateral side on the distal row. This would be your trapezium. Next to the trapezium is the trapezoid. Then we have the capitate and the hamid, which looks like a little hammer because it has a little handle right over there. And this is on the anterior view. If we go to the posterior view, it's the same thing. But remember, we have to start with the thumb 
on the proximal row. So this would be your scaphoid, this is your lunate, this is your triquetrum. You can see a little bit of the pisiform right over there. Then we start lateral again. This would be your trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hamet. Therefore, if you want to use your mnemonic, you would go Sam likes to push the toy car hard. There are other mnemonics that you can use. One of them is some lovers try positions that they can't handle. It doesn't really matter which one you use as long as you remember where to start, if it's proximal or distal, lateral or medial. On this image, we can also see your metacarpals, which are the bones that will form your hand. So these right over here on this image. Over here is your metacarpal number one, metacarpal number two, metacarpal number three, four, and five. This would be your pollex. So both phalanges, the proximal and the distal phalange for the thumb forms the pollex. And these, for the other digits, it would be your proximal phalanx, your middle phalanx, and your distal phalanx. Another way that I like to think about the bones, because sometimes you get nervous and you forget the mnemonic, there are certain things that you can do with regards to other structures that will help you remember which bone is which. So for me, for example, I remember that the triquetrum is right before the pisiform, which is the little ball. And the way that I remember this is that if you drink too much rum for triquetrum, you're going to piss a lot for pisiform. The other one is that the capitate, right over here, is the one right down the middle finger, which is this one. So you can say, if you stick your middle finger to me, I am going to capitate you. Lastly, one thing that I always get confused with is the trapezium and the trapezoid. I never remember which one comes first, but think of it this way. The trapezium ends with an M, so if you draw a cursive M, it's going to have three little hoops. So this means that after the trapezium, you're going to have three little hoops, which are going to be the trapezoid, capitate, and hamet. The other thing that's important and helpful to think about the trapezium this way is that you don't get the trapezium confused with the trapezius, which is a muscle, which we will cover when we get to muscles. So therefore, you remember that it's a trapezium and not a trapezius. But again, whatever is helpful for you to remember.